Substance Designer is a tool that allows us to create images using a node-based system. We can edit color and grayscale information with it, but there is something no one is talking about and it's super powerful, and that is the Pixel Processor, a tool integrated in Substance Designer that allows us to edit each pixel of your image. This tool is based off coding, but instead of writing lines, you will be connecting nodes. Yes, this is going to get super technical, guys, and believe me when I tell you this is hard to learn, but thanks to our Discord community, I managed to cross some professionals who are experts in this topic as Ben Wilson and Marco Vitale and then lend me a hand into learning this. Today I will share the basics of what I have learned with them and I will be really specific about every detail of information. So let's start together this new series to learn more about the world of material art in pixel processor. Today we need to learn some basic concepts like data types. What are these? Data types is a way to categorize information that we will use in our code or process and there are four of them. Two of them store numbers, and the first one is a float value. Float values store only decimal numbers, that means numbers with only a comma. We then have integers, these store only whole numbers. This means that if you have an integer, inside an integer you won't be able to have a number with a comma or a decimal number. And same goes for the float value, you can't have a whole value inside a float value. There are also two other types of information, but these store something different to numbers. We can store letters using strings, and finally we can set something to be true or false by using a boolean. Boolean only hold true or false information and it's really used for functions and other kinds of statements. Now don't worry, we will watch all of this in designer and I will show you examples about this and we will make our first variable and function as well. So now let's open our graph. As you can see we are now inside Substance Designer and there's actually nothing showing in here and the only thing we have is this, is our node, a pixel processor. But today we're not going to work with these ones. The reason we are not going to work with this one is because this is for another video where we are going to be creating our complete node. So I would try to start sharp and subscribe so you can learn later how to make this secret node that I will be showing in our next video. So if we're not going to work with this, what are we going to work with first? So this is our basic Substance Designer graph. We go here, I can look for levels and many other nodes that you are used to seeing. But here you have a pixel processor node. You can create this by pressing tab, go for pixel processor and you can have your node. The way of editing this is by clicking on the edit and you're gonna get in here and you're gonna have this node. If a node has this yellow color on top that means that you are using this as an output to your node. But once again we are not gonna work with pixel processor nodes in particular. We're gonna use another kind of node to learn today and that's gonna be the value processor. There we go. The reason we're gonna be working with the value processor is because we want to watch the numbers. Yes, we're gonna work with a lot of information and pixel processor turns all your information into grayscale. That means that if I want to see a zero or a white, it's gonna show you me black or white information, but in here, the value processor can show me any kind of number. Yeah, and it works mostly likely the pixel processor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get inside the value processor and I'm gonna click on edit. And as you can see, it's actually quite empty. So now we're gonna start with the different data types. And the first one was a float. So if you press tab and you go for float, you're gonna see that there's actually four of them. So I'm gonna create the first one. Any node, yes, inside your value processor or your pixel processor that has this kind of color, yes, is meant to be a data type node. If I go here and I create an integer, yes, as well, you're gonna see they have exactly the same color, but we're gonna remove the integer for a moment. So in here we have a float. A float is data that is being stored with decimal numbers. That means that if I move this, you're gonna see that I can make a number, any kind of number with a comma. Yes, if I create an integer now, yeah, an integer doesn't have a comma, it's a float number. Yeah, so it's a whole number. So for example, I'm just gonna give you this example. I'm gonna have a one-on-one, -on -one. but as you have seen before, there's more than one float. And you have float two, float three, and float four, as well for other kinds of vectors and integers. So every time you go from a float to a float two to the next one, you start to see that there's new channels of information. So in here we have one value. In this one, we have two values, yes, and we can use both of them. And we can do this until four channels. So we can just keep going, yes, float three, and then we have a float four. These are different kinds of information that we can use. Remember, a float one is 
set to be graceful information. A float2 usually is used to represent two kinds of values, mostly set between x and y. Of course, this is not a vector, this is just float information. If I wanted to go for vector information, I would have to go for a vector float2, but not in this case. So we can do this not only with the floats, but with the integers. Yeah. So again, we can have different channels, and all of these channels are going to store the information we want. Yeah. Now, there's something else we have that are strings. Yeah. So we're going to write here string. Yes. And you can see here, I have this string and I can write a world here. And I'm going to write hello world. Of course, this string in here can set can be can't be set as an output node because that's not what this uh, node is for. I'm not really sure what we can use this for, but I'm gonna try to look more. I know how to use it in code, for example, if I'm trying to print something in my computer, but if not, in Substance Designer so far, I haven't discovered well what I can use this string information in words to. And finally, we have booleans. Yes, booleans are only set to, to put a statement into false or true. Yes, it's pretty much as when you go, if we go back here, if we go for a switch, uh, switch grayscale, and I have this, we are using a boolean here. Yes, we are setting this to true or to false. This is a boolean. Same way that if we go here to a histogram scan, yes, and we're using this, this is a float value because you can see that it has decimal numbers. Yeah, I haven't seen many integers being used in these ones, but usually we are in such a designer where you're working with grayscale information, we are really used to uh, using in, uh, float values. Now you can see there's an error here, and the reason for this error is that we don't have an output. If I come here and I delete this and I set my float for to an output, you're gonna see that now if I go back, the result are four numbers. Yeah. So before we keep moving forward and we start creating our first things, we have to learn something new. We are now going to work with variables and functions. A variable is a way we have to store certain type of data inside a name. We have to be specific about almost everything we do. And as an example, I will write a variable called my age and make it store an integer value of 25. For this line of code, I'm using the language code of Godot Gaming Engine that is called GDScript. Each programming language will have its own way of writing things to communicate and that's something important to know because what you're going to see right now is not going to be the same that if you use C Sharp or any other kind of programming languages as Python and so on. This is the variable I wrote. This variable is telling my computer that my age holds an integer value of 25. So let's break this down. First, I'm telling my computer that I will create a variable by writing a bar. That is a statement that I'm going to create a variable. Then I'm giving a name to this variable that the name is what follows us after bar that is called my age. And I'm using an underscore because I like having those kinds of spaces in the middle just to be more organized. After that, I'm telling my script that this variable will only hold integer data. That means that if I use my variable in a place where I should be using float data, this won't work. The computer is going to tell me that I am using integer value in a place where I have floats value. So it's kind of a way of being more organized. Finally, I'm making my integer value or my whole variable equal to 25. Now, if I want to use the integer value of 25, I can do it anywhere in my code by typing my age and the script will understand that this is going to be equal to 25. Now, this is super useful to work with functions, but what are functions? A function is a reusable block of code that performs a specific task. A function has a name and inside it, we can do whatever we want. We can call to this function by using its name and it's quite similar to variables. The only difference is that functions we have a utility that we can define. Today, we will work with a function that has an if statement. Now let's take a look at everything I just explained. So we are back to Substance Designer and we are going to start by creating our variables. But in order to start to create those variables, we are going to create them outside. So I'm going to come here. Yes, and I'm going to double click on my background. And in here, you're going to see that I have my parameters. The first ones are the ones from my node here. Yes, that we're not going to look at them today. And this one is one I created for today's test. So what we are going to do is when you double click on the background, and you have these parameter settings, you're going to click on this plus icon and it's going to create an input. And you see that this is set to float. And the identifier is going to be my age. Yeah, and I'm going to set this to my label. And as you can see, I can choose the type of information I want this to be. And it's going to be a float information. And the default for this is going to be 25 because that's my age. Now, for what we are going to do, we're going to need another kind of parameter, another float. But in this case, it's going to be called brother 
h yeah so again control c i'm going to copy this set this into a label and set this to 15 yeah i want this to be lower than my h so now i have my two parameters in here and i'm going to go back to my power processor so how can we use this here the way we can use this is by using the get function. So the get is gonna get the values and functions that we have created. And in this case, we have created a float value. So we're gonna get into this get float. I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna go for my age. And if I set this to as an output, you're gonna see that in here in the 2D image, you see the result is 25. If I copy get float and set to brother's age now, and set this to output, it's going to be 15. Yeah. And that's how you create a variable in here. And again, you can do this with many other things. Yeah. You can use this to be any kind of information from Boolean, integers, floats, and even strings. I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to get in here again. So this is how we create our variables and how we can call for them. There's another way of calling environment or setting variables, but for the moment, I'm just going to show you the start because I found a problem with this. So I can create a float value in here. Yes, I'm going to set this float value to be two and I can set this to be a function or variable. And I'm going to set this name to be test. If I set this as an output node, you're going to see that this test is giving me a 2 as a value. Yes, as the float value you have before. But here's lies the problem. If I get this as a float in here, the result is going to be 0. And that's why we are not doing it this way. I'm not sure why. If someone knows and wants to leave this in the comments and why this is not actually working as it should, it could be actually really helpful. So we're going to delete this and going to come here. So now here we have our two variables, my age and my brother's age being 25, I've been seen. So we are going to get into this function and this function is the if statement. The if statement gives us a condition. So depending on the result of a condition, we're going to get one output or another. We are going to work it this way. The condition is defined by a boolean. If the condition is true, meaning if something happens, meaning that is true, you're going to get the first output. Else, meaning that if the condition is not true, the condition is false, you're going to get the second input in here. Yeah. So let's give it a try. So I'm going to set my age and my brother age. Yeah. So if I were to set this to be true, then the result of this node should be 25. If I set this as an output, you see that the result is 25. Why? Because if the condition is true, I get this result. Else, meaning if this is false, we get our brother's age, this is 15. Yeah? And this is the, the best way to show you if and else statements. And the reason we're doing this is because we can play a lot with this. Now, there's a problem with this. If we're trying to make something procedural, having a boolean here that we have to click on to change inside the node to be true or false is actually not the best way. So what I can do, yes, here is I'm going to delete this, is I can come here yeah, and I can create a way to generate a new boolean without having to use the boolean node. And that's going to be greater. Yes, greater or equal. Yeah, you also have another kind of node like this one that is going to be lower or lower or equal. Yes, and they work pretty much the same way. So the greater or greater and equal node works this way. We have two inputs, input A and B. This function is comparing these two values. Yes, if the first value is greater than the second value, the output of this is going to be a true value, a boolean set of true. If I create a boolean here, you're going to realize something. The output color of this line is equally to this one. That means that we are getting a boolean. So once again, is my A input, it's bigger than my B input, the result should be true. If I set in around, it's going to be false, but because my age is higher than my brother's age. Yeah. Same happens for lower. If I go for lower, it's going to be actually the other way around. And if I go for equal, that means that if I have here, yes, let's say I have a float value in here. Yeah. And I'm going to so this is an output, you're going to see that my is 25 and it's bigger than zero. But if I set this to 25, it's sorry, to 25, this is going to still be true. If I go to my greater node, yes, and change my brother age by 25, you're going to see that this is going to change to false because this is looking for something bigger than my age, not equal and lower. Yeah. So we're going to remove these ones here. Yes. And we're going to work with greater recall. Yeah. And this is going to be my condition. Now I need to choose something to happen here, if or else, yeah? So the if or else, we can't, in this case, 
we're gonna get we can get let's ooh, let's try getting an integer so and see if this no not an integer sorry a string and let's see if this actually works yes so i'm gonna get this here and this here and my string it's gonna say i am older and this one is gonna say i am smaller yeah so if I set this as an output node, but unfortunately it looks like I can't, like this only shows numbers, not, yeah, I can't set this to as an output, so I'm not gonna be able to do this. So we're gonna redid this, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a float one, and if the result is true, I'm gonna set this to one, and if the result is false, I'm gonna set this to two. Yeah, so now if I set this as an output node, you're gonna see that my result is one. And if I go back here now and click on this node, or maybe just go in here and go to a preview, I can change my age, yes, to change these parameters. So you can see that if I go lower or higher, it's changing. Now we made a mistake here and we use a float value. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here and I go to my parameters and I'm gonna change my age from a float value to an integer. And same happens from my brother's age. I'm gonna change this from a float to an integer. That means that now I need to get back in here and instead of getting a flow, I need to get an integer. And I'm gonna do this again, get integer, my age, Another one, sorry, another one. Brothers H, get this here, get this here, yes, and save this. Going back, and now if I go once again to my preview, my age, see, I have full power over it. Yeah, and this is super useful to understand. The reason we need to understand this is because later we might get into some of these basic equations, but in order to create other stuff. If I go now inside this pixel processor node, you will not understand a thing. And the reason for that is because we need to learn some basics for that. And these are the most basic of them. Yes. So remember about float, integers, yes, booleans and shrinks. And remember about variables and functions because we are going to get a lot into these topics in order to create our nodes in the future guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in our next chapter